Okay, um, good morning. Today we are going to discuss about the food enzymes and functionality. So when we talk about the food enzymes, uh, enzymes, uh, I mentioned you earlier also that the enzymes are the kind of, uh, it's a protein, actually, it's a protein uh, that is uh, the basic units of the enzymes are also the amino acids. So it's a, there is a peptide bonds and also the different amino acids and the amino acid side chains also there with the amino acids and it's a, it's a, a kind of a protein. But uh, there is a very special situation of the, these enzymes. Enzymes is having a special cavities because it's organized in the, in the, in the, to give a kind of, give a special cavities. Therefore, it's having a, it's having different activity there because of that cavities they can capture the other other uh, other molecules they can capture and they can activate the, the uh, they can uh, support for some kind of reaction so the actually the nearly all chemical reactions biological cells need enzymes to make the reaction occur fast through the enough the support life so you can see there's a baby uh, or the fetus and then the baby and then the becoming a mature person and also becoming a um, older person. So all those uh, changes happening in, in the cell of, the, of, of our body and uh, this, uh, all, the, all, all these kind of uh, reactions or the changes support by the enzymes. Without enzymes, actually, we can't live. Therefore, our, all the activities in our organs and our body, everything is uh, controlled by the enzymes. I, uh, I am not a uh, the nutrition person or the explain those kind of things much more detail. But I think up to now, you have learned about that, uh, what kind of uh, support we can give as a, uh, from the enzymes. When we talk about the enzymes in a chemical um, chemical point of view, that means as a, in a, as in a chemistry, that the chem uh, chemical reaction always that there is a two uh, I think reactant, the one reactant reactant A and if there is a reactant B that uh, to make this uh, A and B together and make a reaction, it need a initial input of energy. So we call that the activation energy. Without any energy, this reaction, reaction is not going on. I think you have uh, at the, in your A-level class, at the beginning when you, are work, when you are learning about the organic chemistry, you have understand that for, for basic reaction even, we have to give some heat. Therefore, you use the triangle mark and the, the, it is heat and the, uh, without heat that the reaction is not going on. So that means we have to provide, uh, that means uh, to these two reactions can't get together and uh, make a, a pro develop a, or the producer another product, but uh, product, but uh, we need, uh, we need to give a uh, energy. So the, the, we call this activation energy, it's a depend on the, the, whatever the reaction. During this, uh, but, uh, if there is, a, because uh, the two reactions, uh, if they have some normal temperature, maybe 30 degrees or 35 degrees, sometimes it's uh, working on. In some situation, we, give, we need to give the energy from the outside. That is why we want to heat the, heat the reactant or the um, even uh, reactant or this S tube. So you have, you have uh, I think you have a lot of experience about that uh, uh, in the university level under the laboratory course in chemistry, chemistry two, and different uh, practical classes we have done. So the, during this part of the reaction, the molecule are set to be in a transition state. 
So the, when you see this picture, you can observe that um, reaction pathway is uh, showing here. The free energy is giving reactant sign a free energy level. Normally, reactant sign the free energy level. Therefore, to add to the uh, to to come to the make this reaction reactants get together or work together or mix together or they react together, then uh, then they come to the transition state. To come to the transition state, that uh, it is needed the activation energy. So the, uh, then only the, the, when they come to the transition state, they get uh, they react together, react with each other and produce the what the product whatever the whatever we need, right? Therefore, the what uh, making reactant go faster, increasing the temperature make molecule move faster. If the if molecule move faster, that the that uh, molecule A and molecule B can get together and produce a, whatever the product we need. In the case of biological systems are very sensitive to temperature changes. We know that uh, biological systems uh, can change quickly if we change the temperature. Therefore, but in some situation we, uh, we introduce some temperature, but, uh, but the situation is that the original product can be changed. Even we know about this situation uh, when we talk about the proteins, carbohydrates, and a lot of uh, we, we learn a lot of things, a lot of products. That, uh, therefore, biological systems very sensitive. What enzymes can increase the rate of reaction without increasing the temperature? So, therefore, the task of the enzyme is it can increase the rate of reaction without increasing the temperature. That is why in our body, even uh, we use. There, there are a lot of enzymes are there working in our body, but without changing or increasing the temperature, the it uh, sometimes it can be uh, some let's say some lipids. Uh, once we uh, eat the lipid, lipid can break down in our gut using the lipase enzyme. So we are not going to produce any heat or the uh, we need not to drink hot water to uh, activate the activate the, the, this reaction. But it's going on. Right? It's no problem. It's going on. Therefore, enzymes can increase the rate of reaction because enzymes are supporting to break down these, uh, these uh, lipids to the uh, different fatty acids and then break down uh, lipids to the, by using the lipase enzyme with the fatty acids. Then fatty acid only absorbed by the body. In, in similar way that the, the glucose even uh, what's, uh, sorry, sucrose or the whatever the sugars also break, can break down at our body, at the guts, right? At the, at the stomach and also also in the in intestinal tract. Therefore, in the same way that enzymes can increase the rate of reaction without increasing the temperature, they do this by lowering the activation energy. They create a new reaction path is a shortcut. Therefore, what the enzymes can do is they can uh, they can lower the activation energy and they produce a new reaction pathway. Now we see this picture and enzyme control pathway is showing here. We know that the lactose, lactose is available in the, in the meal and lactose need to break down to the glucose and galactose. When it uh, come to the, that monomers, they can absorb by our body. Uh, you can see that uh, the, what the activation energy is doing, activation energy without enzymes, it needs more, more energy. And net energy release from splitting of lactose is a really high at the showing in the picture A. And when it comes to the picture B, you can see there is an enzyme called lactase. That lactase enzyme is taking this uh, to the lactose to the other cavities, and uh, then it, uh, it support for going the support for breakdown in reaction, and then it's produced glucose and galactose. And again, the enzymes uh, that lactase enzyme is free. Uh, uh, it's uh, free from the from this reaction reaction site, and it can uh, it can uh, capture another lactose molecule. So you can see because of the enzymes, enzyme is support here to uh, to reduce the activation energy energy. Therefore, so the reaction is going on very fast without any problem. So the that is the that is the role of the enzyme in a uh, whatever the uh, whatever the thing we are going to learn under the food uh, under the food industry food uh, uh, principles of food science 
we are not going to talk about the what is the enzyme role of the biological uh, in our body or the in the biological way but we are going to talk about the what how enzymes is going to support for a, a produce for producing different type of food products actually in this situation enzyme control reactions proceed 108 to 1011 times faster than corresponding non enzymatic reaction by reducing the activation energy that the enzyme sees because you can see producing activation energy and then get these reactants together is that it needs some time but here that it's a make it very faster because it needs to hardly come to the transition state very quickly it come to the transition state and reaction is going on when we talk about the enzyme structure, enzymes are proteins. Proteins, are, proteins mean that it's a polymers of amino acid. But the situation is enzymes are the globular shape. It's a globular protein. You have learned about the globular shape. And it's a complex 3D structure with quaternary structure is there. Globular as well as the quaternary structures, structures is there, right? And there is alpha helix shape, alpha helix what is the uh, mono primary structure as well as the beta helix? Yeah, alpha helix and beta sheets are there. And you can see by seeing this picture, even there are spiral uh, shaped ones as well as the, uh, the sheets uh, parallel to each other. You can see, and therefore, the, we can say it's a protein, uh, it's, a, it's a protein, right? And but, uh, but uh, interestingly, there are some cavities that cavities are supporting to capture the, the reactions then when we talk about the the then uh, we want to know about the active site now you can see the in the b picture the, the b purple color one those are the those are enzymes right enzymes in the kind of a protein it's a globular protein you can see it's a small dot dotted type one those are the amino acid units and therefore it's a combination of the lot of amino acid units so it's a, enzymes are produced When we talk the, when we talk about the active sites, you can see in the, the picture the substrate. We call the two words a substrate and enzyme. That substrates are always captured by the enzyme. They are active, by the enzymes, and these uh, substrates are the very. Uh, it's a lock and key theory. That means the, those substrates are very can be fit to the enzyme uh, cavities so enzyme that the, uh, uh, the shape. And therefore, the enzyme substrate complex are formed later on. Here you can see the substrate is a smaller yellow color uh, uh, droplet like ones. And then the uh, active sites are there in the enzyme. And uh, when it, the when it, uh, enzymes and substrate complex, you can see how it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it can be formed like that. So the one part of an enzyme, the active site is particularly important. Therefore, the active site of the enzymes are very important. Enzyme to enzyme, this active site's uh, shape, is, shape, uh, shape is different. Because one enzyme and the other enzymes are two different protein molecules. Therefore, those uh, active sites are different to each other. Therefore, the, if you are, if you want to work with the one type, well, let's say now the, we are you going to use the uh, basically we know that we use enzyme for preparation of a cheese, and that enzyme may be not suitable for preparation of the wine because in the both industries we use enzymes in a, in a, to reduce the activation in a gen, make reaction reaction faster. The shape and the chemical environment inside the active site permits a chemical reaction to proceed more easily. Right? Therefore, the, the shape and the chemical environment inside the active site permits a chemical reaction to proceed more easily. And uh, because now it's in the cavity and now it's a uh, support for going on the reaction very, uh, very easily. Um, without uh, 
disturbing from the other situation. Here, the we next uh, we we should have to know about the cofactors. So the, there are the something and uh, the additional non-protein molecules that is needed by some enzymes to help the reaction. Tightly bound cofactors are called prosthetic prosthetic group. Now uh, the situation is uh, now next uh, next uh, term is the cofactor. In some situation, if the in the protein or the uh, or the enzyme actually, if it is inactive, situ inactive situation, that cofactors uh, are support to make it active. Cofactors that are bound and released easily are called coenzymes. May, uh, many vitamins are coenzymes. Those vitamins are support to the enzymes and uh, attached to the enzymes, and later on, it will work as a uh, it will work as um, it produces uh, active size and thereby the reaction can be going on. Without the cofactor attached, the protein is not active. Once they attack the protein, cofactor binding activates the protein. That protein is the enzyme, that enzymes are supporting for, a, uh, for activate the uh, reaction. The other one is when we talk about the substrate, the substrates of an enzyme are the reactants that are activated by the enzyme. Uh, Subjects of an enzyme are the reactants that are activated by the enzyme. Enzymes are specific to their substrate. The specificity is determined by the active site. So, example, like, uh, for enzymes, uh, for the amylase, in, in, uh, name of the enzyme is amylase. You have learned about the learned about the amylase, amylase uh, because uh, not the amylose, amylose and amylopectin. You have uh, learned those are available in the start. Therefore, amylase enzyme only work with, uh, work with the starch. Substrate is starch. If the starch is there, then amylase enzyme is uh, can be do their work. Can work, work on that. Then maltose, sucrase, cyprase, pepsin, catalase. Likewise, different enzymes are there. Those substrates are the maltase is working with the maltose. Sucrase is working with the sucrose. Lipase is working with the lipids, pepsin is working with the protein, catalase is working with the hydrogen peroxide. So likewise that the enzymes are available. When we talk about the lock and key hypothesis, actually you, uh, you have you, uh, noticed that the lock and key hypothesis is always that they, if, if we take the padlock, that padlock has a special key. By using the other keys, you can't open that padlock. So therefore the, that uh, whatever the substrate, uh, Subjects are very specific and work with the specific enzymes. Therefore, all the keys are not support for a different type of uh, different type of uh, padlocks. Likewise, the, that padlock is key, fit with the only that key. This explains the loss of activate activity when enzymes denature, right? So the actually now if uh, now if the, the uh, padlock is the padlock and keys fit to each other. If, uh, if the padlock is changed and if you are going to use the same key, you can't, uh, you even you can't fix it or you can't enter the key to the padlock. In a similar way, the enzymes are the proteins. Therefore, with the, the protein can be changed with the pH, protein can be changed with the uh, heat and uh, some iron concentration and what else. You have learned lo a lot because of the environmental factors that protein can be changed. And similarly, enzymes also can be changed with the environmental effect. For example, uh, if, uh, if, we, uh, if, uh, if in that enzyme is working in the pH 4, is uh, in, a, in, a, in a maximum capacity. So if we change the pH in the environment to pH 5, that enzyme is not working because even smaller changes of pH even uh, can be changed the enzyme active sites because enzymes are very sensitive, sensitive proteins, and therefore by changing the pH that the it's, uh, it's, uh, it's make uh, arrangement to to uh, alter or the to work with the or to stay in the environment. Therefore, that the active sites that the the cavities uh, cavity shape can be changed. So therefore, the, the if we change the environment of the enzyme, 
then enzyme activity will goes down very quickly that means the enzyme denature very quickly because of the change in ph because of the changing heat and because of the changing ionic concentration basically these three and there are many more even the pressure or different situation it, it is not working therefore the, the substrates are very fit to the active sites of the enzyme and uh, enzyme substrate complex will be formed like that but if we, if uh, because of the because of change in the environmental condition you can't uh, take it you can't carry on the oh what's this uh, Excuse me, what's this message? iPhone to me, madam, madam spelling will be. There is a connection problem to me right now, madam. Connection problem, you know, the chat take the message. And I also ask everyone to come with the name. Right, not from your the phone name names or nothing. You can change it at the. Uh, you can come with the phone number and the phone index number and the name. Right? Don't use uh, different names. If we found out, so the the people who are coming with the outside from different you by not using your name and uh, the index numbers, then it will be a problem for us. So we will record those things. Right. The induced fit hypothesis. I'm going to explain next. Some proteins can change their shape. That means conformation. So the how they can when a substrate combines with an enzyme, it induces a change in the enzyme's conformation. The active site is then molded into a precise conformation and making the chemical environment suitable for the reaction. Right. So the, uh, the bonds of the substrates are stretched to make the reaction easier, lower activation energy. So what is the induced fit hypothesis is that uh, once that the enzyme is uh, fit with the substrate, it can be uh, make uh, the enzymes uh, make an arrangement to support the, or make a uh, chemical environment suitable for the reaction. Because uh, you can see that uh, so the now there is a, the protein or the starch or the uh, the whatever the lipids so those everything is having their own molecular structure right molecular structure and molecular shape and so they like as a, a, likewise when we what we can see as a protein protein is having a different different shapes right so they likewise so the all other molecules are having different different shapes because of the enzymes, once the enzyme fixed with this substrate, the substrate, the, the substrates will, uh, the, whatever the unnecessary uh, areas will be covered by the protein and necessary, whatever the supportive area only exposed to the environment. Thereby, the, making the chemical environment suitable for the reaction, that is why um, reaction is going on. The bonds of the substrates are stretched to make the reaction easier, right? Because of the, uh, the substrate is having the different bonds. That bonds only uh, needed to carry on the reaction. So the, if there are the other, other bonds are available uh, or the if other bonds also or other molecular uh, what's, uh, area of, the, of that molecule is, the, is uh, so, so getting the activation energy to the upper the transition level. So it needs energy because all molecules should, should need to up, uh, upgrade to that level. But in the case of uh, once we enter the enzyme, enzyme is uh, capture the substrate, and it is uh, then it need both together need a very small activation energy to uh, or the to come to the transition state, and it support for the reaction. Actually, in this situation, enzyme is not involved into the reaction, but only it just it gives some kind of support to reduce the activation energy and make the substrate to the transition level so that is it's a role thereby it make a reaction easier 
The induced fit hypothesis, uh, when we talk about that, substrates entering active sites of enzymes, right? Substrates and uh, lactose, as you can see, and the enzyme changes uh, shape slightly as substrates bind. So the enzymes can change uh, uh, slightly, but not a very big level uh, when it uh, binds with the substrate. Uh, please uh, mute your all phone, all microphones. Enzyme substrates, uh, then it produces the enzyme substrates complex, and then it go, goes to the, uh, you can see that uh, substrates now change, right? Substrates now, the two substrates change now, and in the, because, because, because reaction is going on, therefore, then because it's support to the reaction, that now reaction happened. Already reaction happened. Therefore, the, it's happening, enzyme products happening inside the enzyme products complex. And time being, products leaving active site of enzyme as a product, uh, as a product, and enzyme is there as it is. You can see, uh, please uh, mute your phones, mute your microphones. Yeah, um, so Shema, can you check who are the people not uh, mute their phones? Okay, madam. And uh, please uh, send a private message to the person to me uh, asking to mute their phones. Please check. Right. Then uh, you can see at the at the beginning that the substrates are coming as uh, the two units. Let's say now, as I mentioned you earlier. In the, the what is in the uh, lactose, uh, you have seen that the two units are there together. And one, one it uh, let's go to that picture again. Now you can understand that easily. As a lactose molecule is uh, two uh, molecules of the glucose and galactose, right? So the what uh, the enzymes is doing is enzyme capture these two lactose molecules together to the lactase enzyme. And that uh, it support to react support for the reaction or the breakdown the bonds by the enzyme, but enzyme is not doing anything but because only support into the whatever the break whatever the bond we need to break down. It's a uh, it's producing it uh, it's supporting or it give a, give it came it, uh, it uh, bring it to the front, and therefore the enzyme activity is going on. Yeah. It can uh, activities uh, can go in on, and thereby later on glucose and galactose two molecules is produced. Now you can see what says action of the enzyme, but the enzyme is there and uh, it's, uh, it it doesn't uh, nothing happen to the enzyme by only by this capturing and supporting for the breakdown of these uh, the the substrates because of the enzyme. It can it can uh, faster the reaction rate by uh, basically thousand times. Okay. So that is the induced fit hypothesis, and the, the, this explains the enzyme that can react with the range of substrates of similar types. If the substrate is having a same similar type of a shape, then that uh, whatever the, that the specific enzyme can work uh, with that substrate. So therefore, the, some, in some situation, uh, some enzymes are, can be work in a, in a different situation. We can learn those things later on. So factors affecting enzymes, so I mentioned substrate concentration, pH, temperature, and also the inhibitor, right? pH, temperature, um, inhibitors, and the substrate concentration, concentration is depending or affecting the enzymes. In the normal situation, you can see the enzyme is really uh, showing a very a good shape or the real, real shape of the active size. And but if you change the heat or if you change the pH or in different pH, what will happen? We know that the protein denatured. In similar way, enzymes can be denatured, and therefore you can see their active size is now in a different shape than uh, so, uh, in. Uh, that means denatured enzymes cannot uh, be taken subjects to their to subjects to their cavities. So the it is happening heat and pH. 
And uh, let's see, uh, now uh, you know this, uh, you have learned a lot about the, what's the changes of uh, what happened to the protein with the, because of the pH and temperature. You know that the normal functionality is even gone because of change in pH and temperature and uh, denaturing because of the denaturing happening. But let's see what's happening with the substrate concentration and inhibitors. So when we talk about substrate concentration in the enzymatic reaction, substrates are there, and the enzymes also there, and the, the if we, if there is a low substrate uh, substrates, then all the enzymes can capture each and every substrate, and therefore the reaction is going on very fast. But in some situation, because uh, in in some situation, if we are going to increase the substrate, so you can see that the uh, increase the substrate, then the enzymes can capture uh, one by one substrate. And uh, there is a no fight because the enzymes are there, substrates are there, enzymes can capture the substrate. But the, but the time being, if you are going to increase the concentration of the substrate, you can see the enzyme, all enzymes are capture the substrate. Uh, but uh, there are no more enzymes to capture more substrates. Therefore, substrates even are uh, the enzyme, substrates even are uh, the fighting to. Uh, in, go inside to the sub, to the enzymes, there and there also there are a lot of substrates are available freely in the environment. Then uh, those uh, substrates are not going to not the, the reaction not support for the reaction. They are there, right? So the therefore the enzymes are supporting for the going on the reaction. However, the substrates substrates can, meaning that what we uh, that means, uh, for example, let's say now we want to. Uh, break down the lactose to the glucose and uh, galactose, right? But uh, but it is not going on because a lot of subjects are there, less enzymes are there, therefore the reaction is not going on. We Because finally we know what's happened to the reaction. So the, whether the reaction is going on, up here, so example, let's see, now uh, we think that the, we want to prepare the cheese, let's say, the, uh, for example, uh, cheese, so producing cheese, or yogurt or pork, or curd, something like that. But uh, once we introduce the thing, it's uh, not going on. But in some situation, if we want to make a wine or beer, we want to make, break down the uh, sucrose molecule, but it's, it's not going on. Because fi as a, finally, we can observe only the reaction is not going on well. So the reason is the enzymes amount is lower than the substrates. Therefore, the reaction is going on, not going on. In the other case, actually here, the, these reactions are going on always in the medium of, medium of water. Water should be there. So you have noticed that in the first, like, first part of the, our lecture series, so the uh, course module, you learn about the water. When the water actually is going down, enzyme activities not activities also re reduced. You have noticed that what is what's happened when the water activity going down means that there is no freely available water in the medium to move substrates and the enzyme freely to capture each other. Therefore, enzymatic activity is going down. Therefore, the for happening this reaction very freely and very fast a situation. The water activity or the free water is, should be there. And in this picture showing that the what is the where the reaction rate. Reaction rate is uh, come to the maximum, and after that it's, uh, it's going to as a flat rate uh, means that uh, no more reaction. We can't increase the reaction rate. That's all. Therefore, the substrate concentration is really important uh, to maintain the uh, reaction. Faster. faster reaction, but it reaches a saturation point when all the enzyme molecules are occupied. If you alter the concentration of enzyme, then the maximum will change too, right? Therefore, the, you have to think about which concentration is needed to maximize the, uh, re maximize the reaction rate. Let's see what is the other one is the effect of pH. We know that the pH is uh, very supportive to change the uh, sorry, pH is supportive to, I mean, for different different proteins are having, they are, uh, are happy to stay in their the correct pH. 
if there is a different, we change the different pH or we, if we change the pH, then that protein try to, uh, protein denatured, then they try to agglomerate, uh, accumulate to each other, they accumulate, it's a coagulate each other, come, it want to come together, and likewise they behave according to change in the pH, right? What is happening that the pH means uh, the acidic and basic medium, uh, the protein molecules, active sites of the protein molecules, and active sites of the amino acids are very sensitive to the pH because they, you know, that the protein is having six different type of bonds. Those bonds uh, really um, uh, try to change or can be changed by changing the pH. In similarly, enzymes also having a, they are enzymes also happy to stay with their their happy pH level. For example, that means that, that pH level is uh, it, it gives they are the maximum activity to specific pH level. For example, you can see when the, the stomach pepsin is uh, working very happily, the reaction rate is very uh, increased or the up to the maximum level in a pH level in a very low level. But when we compare the intestine trypsin, is uh, having a different, uh, having, uh, it's, uh, it, it gives a uh, maximum reaction rate in the different pH level. So likewise, so every react enzymes is, ha is having their own um, happy pH level that gives a maximum, maximum reaction rate. Therefore, the, because now you know what is the, the what is the principle behind that, why, why those things are not uh, supporting to different pH level. Uh, because of the denaturing and therefore we have to provide the correct pH level to that enzyme to uh, work in their maximum reaction rate. Right? Therefore always we use the buffer solutions when we work with the pH. During the uh, enzyme the reaction going on in the, when we use the enzyme reaction in a laboratory level, so the, basically we use buffer to maintain the pH. Extreme pH levels will produce denaturation. The structure of the enzyme is changed. The active site is destroyed, distorted, and the substrate molecule will no longer fit in it. Now you can see because active site distorted or disarranged, therefore the substrate molecule uh, is not fit to that. At pH values slightly different from the enzyme's optimum value, small changes in the charges of the enzymes and substrate molecules will occur. Right? At the pH value, slightly different from the enzyme optimum value, small changes in the uh, in the changes of the enzymes and its substrate molecules will occur. This change in ionization will affect the binding of the substrate with the active site. Right? This uh, because of the changing of the change in the pH, the ionization levels will be changed. Therefore, it is effect for the binding of the substrate to the uh, active site of enzyme. Now here you can see the other one is the, the effect of the temperature. So the, now we learn about the, what's happened with the pH and uh, the now substrate concentration. Now we are going to learn about the, what is happened with the enzyme because of the change in pH. The, when we talk about the rate of reaction versus, uh, versus uh, temperature changes, temperature changes versus rate of reaction, you can see that the optimum temperature for humans is uh, close to 37 degrees. Therefore, the heat energy causes more collisions between enzymes and substrates. Enzyme denatured at high temperatures, so it falls rapidly. Now, in our body, our body temperature is nearly 37 degrees. Therefore, that 37 degrees is, a, is the optimum temperature for most of the enzymes in our body. Most of the, almost all enzymes are the maximum uh, reaction uh, rate of reaction is giving at the 37 degrees in the uh, for example therefore the, we are all right at the 37 degrees because though we are going to the antarctic or though we are going to the other sahara desert even uh, whatever the temperature our body temperature will not be increased because it's a, it's a uh, controlled by the uh, by uh, by our body right so the, but if we are having a kind of a different situation, maybe fever or the uh, kind of a virus attack or different situation, 
If our body temperature is going on in a high situation, our enzymes are not working in a proper way. So that is why different, different uh, problems will be coming in our body if we are having a fever condition. That is why always like, once you uh, increase the fever, we always try to down the fever to the 37 by using the giving uh, the another ice cotta tiara in a different situation we uh, the temala piyadala we want to remove the temperature or keep it down and uh, thereby we want to make our body function in a, in a proper proper level in similarly when we talk about the uh, enzymes in the environment the reaction uh, the reacting in the enzymes in the environment even to get it the maximum uh, level, we want to keep it in the whatever the optimum enzyme, the enzyme uh, action, activate level. So in the case of now, uh, let's see now the fish in the cold temperature. Let's say the, the fish, uh, fish although they are in the seal fish or the, that different type of fishes are in the cold temperature. So the actually, if we bring those fishes to the tropical waters and keep in a high temperature, so they can't live because their body enzymes are not working or denatured or not working at the high temperature. Those fishes, are, we can't get that fishes to the tropical waters. So they will, uh, they will die. So the, that is happening to the animals and we know that the, the, so when we want to keep the seal fishes so the uh, fishes in a tropical zoo always we give the uh, that correct environment correct temperature to them to live if we change it they can't live therefore the, the for most enzymes the optimum temperature is about 30 degrees cold water fish will die at 30 degrees because they are enzymes in nature a few bacteria have enzymes that can withstand very high temperature up to 100 degrees. Most enzymes, however, are fully denatured at 70 degrees. Therefore, even when we prepare the yogurt or the uh, curd, even first we boil the, uh, the milk to destroy all the uh, whatever the bacteria or uh, whatever the unnecessary microorganism. And later on, once it comes to cool down to the temperature, maybe around 37 uh, less than 40 degrees then only we introduce that the inoculum or the bacteria to the to, to the system because once if we introduce at the higher level even bacteria will kill though even bacteria will there but the inside whatever the inside they produce is uh, not uh, not uh, we can't keep it uh, there or it's denatured then the reaction is not going on Let's come to the now that's the temperature, then the, let's come to the next uh, point, and that is the next factor is inhibitors. Inhibitors are chemicals that reduce the rate of enzymatic reaction. The, uh, they are usually specific and they work at low concentration. Now, uh, inhibitors are chem inhibitors also the chemicals that reduce the rate of enzymatic reaction. So, let's see how that the inhibitors uh, reduce the uh, rate of the chemical reaction. They are usually specific and they work at a low concentration, right? So the, they block the enzymes, but they do not usually destroy it. Now you can see that the, when that the, there is two types of inhibitors, the one is non-competitive inhibitor and other one is a competitive inhibitor. Non-competitive inhibition and the competitive inhibition. So the at the non-competitive inhibition, that inhibitors are not going to uh, going to fit or the got, not going to insert or the uh, go, go to the active site of the enzyme. It is not going to the active site. But what they do is uh, come, they are the non inhibitor inhibitors. They change the shape of the enzyme. How they do that? The shape of the enzyme. They go and uh, the join with the other other uh, different end of the protein because of the because of this uh, substrates uh, sorry inhibitors are combined with the different end of the protein that uh, protein shape will be changed then so the in, in, in this in, so the, in the same similar way, enzymes also, the, once the substance is going and attached to them, uh, once they are attached to the 
enzyme. Enzyme try enzyme try to tolerate the situation by changing their shape. Once they change in their shape, their active site shape also uh, will be changed. Then, if the active site uh, uh, shape change, then the substrates are coming to attach to the enzyme. Uh, that shape uh, active site active site shape should be support to the substrate. But if there the active site shape change, then substrates can't and uh, go uh, can't and fit into that active site. Therefore, the enzyme activity is not going on. But in other other inhibitors, what they do is they they directly go and fit to the active site of the enzyme. Therefore, once the substrates come there, the active site shape is changed because substrate is there and they change the shape. Therefore, the uh, inhibitors came and uh, fixed and changed the shape. Therefore, substrates are uh, going away and enzymes cannot capture the substrate. So that is the function of the inhibitors, inhibition, enzyme inhibition. Therefore, they always, when we try to uh, uh, carry out the enzyme reaction, so we want to uh, remove the inhibition first and then we let them to go with them uh, to enzyme uh, to support for the reaction. So the, there are four things, pH, temperature, substrate concentration and the inhibitors. They, those four factors are uh, highly affecting for change in the reaction rate of the enzyme reaction rate. Then I think up to now you are you are very clear about what is the enzyme and how enzymes are working to support this the, the this reaction. So when we talk about the industries or uh, industries, there are the main uh, industries using enzymes as uh, starch modification or the starch based industries, dairy based industries. And uh, the brewing, wine, juice, uh, fruit juice uh, preparation of fruit industry, fruit processing industries, and the baking bakery industries. Those are some of them, right? So let's discuss a little bit about these things. Uh, what kind of uh, what kind of actions do enzymes at the industries? So before we go to the go to that point, uh, have you uh, remember some in some houses? I think uh, when they cook meat, the beef or the meat, uh, whatever, when they cook it, sometimes they add uh, the papaya pieces. Have you, sometimes you have experienced your mother or the whatever the person who prepared the foods, they add papaya blocks or papaya pieces to the meat. Then they believe that because of adding that papaya to the meat, they can tender or tenderize the meat. That means that the meat gets softened and easy to uh, chew. So therefore, they, what, what is the meaning of adding the papaya to the meat? That means papaya is having the uh, papain enzyme. Therefore, the, that papain enzyme is support for the tenderizing the meat. So that is why they add the papaya to the meat. Right? So similarly, in a different different enzymes are there. They use this enzyme very very positively, very uh, uh, what is uh, very supportively to the uh, go, carry on the uh, carry on uh, or the support for the processing steps. Enzymes are not using only for a food industry, but in a different inter industry, they also use enzyme, right? For the uh, you can see the beverage industry, dairy industry, bakery industry, pharmaceutical industry, and waste management industry, especially in the to to uh, what's the digest the uh, digest waste or the uh, let's see to break down the waste to the smaller particle, and then the organic synthesis also use enzyme. Then uh, what's uh, one more more the uh, detergents, cosmetics. Textile, leather, uh, paper and pulp, biopolymer, and also the feed industry, they use enzyme. For example, in the feed industry, once they mix all feed, then sometimes they want to ferment it to make it the smaller molecules, thereby the, the digestion will be really improved in the feed. Let's see one by one whatever the enzymes uh, relate to the food industries. Uh, let's see about the first thing is the baking industry. 
So you can in this picture, you can see in the one piece of bread, there are two pieces of bread are showing. The one piece is very short and having a smaller size pose, but the other one is having a bigger size pose and the volume is uh, increase right increase and uh, bigger and by seeing even you can understand that the, the softness of the bigger size of the bread compared to the other one right so how we can do this enzymes are used because of the at the enzyme uh, optimum dosage they can improve uh, hemicellulase lipase and amylase enzymes are used so what kind of support it gives the dough machinability Dose stability, overspring, large, low popular volume, improved crumb texture, structure, those things are producing by adding this uh, hemicellulosis, lipase, and amylase. In this level, actually, in the under the PF principles of the second the second year, so I'm not going to in, uh, let you uh, not going to teach you the what is the inside that the action going on by this, but uh, in the case of hemicellulase. When we use the hemicellulose in the dough, dough means uh, like especially the starch. Starch uh, the, is having the cellulose, uh, cellulose, uh, what is uh, molecule level. That hemicellulose enzyme can break down the cellulose uh, enzymes and uh, cellulose uh, molecules to the smaller particle, right? In the in the other case, in the when, when bread making, we are using fat. The lipase enzyme can break down the fat in the smaller. Uh, particles and the amylase enzyme also in the it's, uh, starch is having the amylose and amylopectin amylase is a uh, is uh, support to break down the amylopectin and amylase to the smaller particle now you can see now the uh, earlier the bread is having the bigger particle now time now because of introducing different type of enzymes we can make that they, it's uh, making a smaller particle when the smaller particles are there, now you can see these three are not supporting for changing the protein, but only the starch and lipids uh, they are attacking. Because of this uh, smaller particle, now uh, the protein gluten structure can be formed very nicely. Because other the attaching attack, attaching uh, lipid particle or the carbohydrate particle or the starch uh, carbohydrate particle, those two are is uh, having a smaller smaller molecules therefore they can make a very uh, plumpy or the very uh, high volume of the of, uh, high uh, let's see improved uh, nature improved text improved texture as well as improved nature of the uh, improved volume of the bread because of have, uh, having a smaller particle of the uh, carbohydrates and the lipid right? therefore dough machinability once you uh, introduce the now bread is making by not uh, the kneading in Sri Lanka we are using the some companies still kneading we are using but basically in the um, the, the companies for the biscuits so the different type of uh, bakery product they use machines cake or biscuits and uh, some bread they use the machine therefore they, if the dough is having a very hard then it's a machinability is really really difficult but once we introduce these uh, enzymes, the starch and lipids get a breakdown and getting a smaller, smaller molecule. Therefore, dough machinability can be increased and you can mix it very nicely because of the enzyme support. And the other thing is dough stability also improved because now the smaller particle and the, uh, the, the whatever the, the dough is now very stable. It's not going to change anything because the, what the once the smaller molecules are there though they can capture the hydrogen H2O molecule and the water water retain retaining is also increasing because smaller molecules can capture the molecule sorry H2O molecule very nicely because by hydrogen bonding and likewise uh, so you can observe then uh, it's a uh, improve the overspring so the coming coming uh, the let's see uh, getting bigger uh, spring so the as well as a larger loaf volume you can get bigger bread you can see improved crumb structure from bigger so whatever the, the shape is going to change eh? sometimes you have seen that in, in some bread you can see there is a no very nice crumb structure but here because you introduce this one because small it breaks down the smaller particle 
it produces smaller particles and it's, it's a nicely give that the crumb structure right so these are the improvements we can get by adding the in, introducing in this uh, type of hemicellulose lipase amylase and in other case that's of the nature this will be changed by these uh, en enzymes And the, the, then we talk about the dairy industry. The rennet is a responsible agent in clotting milk for production of cheese. Right? Rennet is a collective name for a group of proteases, which mainly consists of chymosine. So the uh, rennet is having the proteases enzyme. Therefore, the rennet can be break down the protein to the party uh, protein, and then support for the production of cheese. Let's see. The in the case of yogurt manufacturing, pasteurized or sterilized milk is used to avoid the presence of unwanted bacteria because if there's unwanted bacteria, definitely because the milk is really really good for them to grow. Therefore, the first you have to pasteurize so the sterilize the milk to re, uh, to eliminate all unwanted bacteria. Then the milk is mixed with specially cultured bacteria and kept warm. So we have to keep it warm and uh, the, to, to support to grow the enzyme. So the, the enzymes from the bacteria convert milk sugar lactose into the lactic acid, which gives the sour taste and makes the uh, product semi-solid, right? Now they are the, what the, the bacteria is, enzymes from the bac bac enzyme bacteria, we introduce lactic acid bacteria. Lactic acid bacteria produce an enzyme. That enzyme support to break down the, the convert the milk sugar or the lactose to the lactic acid, right? So the lactic once the lactic acid product produce that the pH of the uh, pH of the system is uh, getting low. Therefore, the we know that then the protein coagulation is going on. Thereby, you will end up with the yogurt, right? So the, this is the other one. The, the, similarly, the, in the case of cheese, you are introducing different bacteria and the inoculum, we call it inoculum, and therefore that is also supported to coagulate that the protein more and more. And uh, in the case of yogurt, actually, it is coagulate, but it's a, again, it's a trap the water. It's a, we are not going to break down the protein in a, in a, in a hardly, in a softly. We break down this softly, therefore, the or the nature softly, therefore, it can trap the water. But in the case of cheese, what they uh, in that back enzyme they totally reduce water and get the other uh, milk protein and uh, fat part together. Thereby, we can finally remove the water from the system and get the other solid part, and uh, time being, we can produce the cheese. When we talk about the, the Enzymes in the dairy industries and what are the example for the application? Acid prote proteinases we use for the milk coagulation. Neutral proteinases we use accelerated cheese ripening, debittering. Enzyme modified cheese we can produce by the neutral proteinases if we introduce. The debittering means the time being that the, the cheese is having a bitter taste more. Therefore, to remove that, we can use the, some enzymes. Uh, pre proteinases and peptidase production of hypoallergenic milk based foods. If you are introducing lipase, accelerated cheese ripening, enzyme modified cheese, flavor modified cheese, structured modified milk fat produce. If you are going to introduce lipases, especially lipases are supporting to break down the lipids in the what in the system. So once the lipid breaks down, you know the lipids is having a, I think you have learned under biochemistry, lipid is having a, a bigger side, the fatty acid chain. If there is a double bonds are there, actually, uh, so the lipase enzyme can attach to the double bond and break down the fatty acid chain at the double bond. So once it double bond, that the smaller, smaller uh, Lipid molecules will be produced. Lipid molecules means uh, butyric acid and uh, different uh, low level C carbon 4, carbon 6, carbon 12, type of uh, carbon 9, and different molecules are formed. So, especially in, the, the, in, in this case, that the different taste, flavors, and aroma will be coming by 
these smaller molecules. Therefore, you can see the uh, structurally modified milk fat pro produced as well as the, the different flavors you can get by using this uh, in the modified cheese by using this lipase enzyme. In beta galaxy, galaxy days, lactose reduced whey products and uh, lactoperoxidase called sterilization of milk, milk replaces for palm. Then the lysosome enzyme we use nitrate replacer for washed curd cheese and cheese with ice. A mental example. So the you can say I mean the uh, cheese solar have you seen that the hill 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 thin cheese so the gradient so spread cheese circles are totally there so one piece you can't see any any holes in that cheese but in some cheeses are like uh, in the craft in the nigger it's a hard but once you cut the piece you can't see any holes there so you can sharply cut it but i think you have seen some cheeses uh, in, the, in the market also available and in the videos you can see that the, the uh, holes are there in this uh, cheese at the you know hill 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 you know kapuama hill hill you know so what is the reason it's a uh, lysosome enzyme lysosome enzyme is used to prepare this uh, this type of cheese right Therefore, in the dairy industry, we are using different type of enzymes actually to produce a different type of cheese. When you get the cheese, even cheese, there are a lot of uh, varieties. Even the, the what is uh, dairy products, even you are having a different varieties. Especially in the case of now, the if you tasted the Highland Highland uh, yogurt, Abebele yogurt, Pontara yogurt, or the other yogurts, even you can observe that the different uh, the what's the liquid yogurt and kind of the, you can taste it in a different way as well as you can uh, feel it uh, the mouth feel also different so we can change by uh, using different enzymes actually there because different bacteria or even the different category in the lactic acid bacteria category there are different species so those are producing different enzymes those enzymes are acting in a different way that is why you can see that the very nice different taste of the yogurt coming uh, uh, yogurt in the market. Let's move to the meat industry. The most frequently used enzymes for protein modification is proteases, transglutaminase and lipases. The, now you know what's the role of the lipases. I have to mention you about the transglutaminase enzyme. So it is also break down the, uh, the it is uh, break down the protein and uh, support for uh, uh, the getting a very, very nice structure it make uh, the more it support to make uh, more bridges or the linkage to the in the protein and protein therefore you can get the very nice structure the other one is protease enzyme also the breakdown in the protein right so the uh, so these things are happening in the enzymes and also the in the case of uh, papain is a support for the tenderization but especially these enzymes are using proteases, transglutaminase, and lipase. So protein modification, therefore modified protein give a different type of uh, action or different type of uh, uh, product at the at the market. So you know that the when we talk about the different type of sausages are available, meatballs are available, and uh, different meat products, right? Even when you eat the sausage, even you can see different texture, different flavor. So those things are produced by um, these uh, different enzymes. Then we come to the wine industry. Enzyme preparations are used throughout the whole wine making process. On the grapes, so weakening and maceration. That means you know that when you eat, you eat grapes, grapes are having a very, uh, some grapes are having the soft nature. Some grapes are having the hard nature. Some grapes you can uh, you can bite it. Some grape, grapes once you take it to your mouth, it's a it's a very sweet and it's a chop for the quickly uh, dissolve means the you can quickly chop it uh, at the mouth. Some are you want to bite it to chop it, right? Therefore, the when the in the vineyards they are they are having uh, the di different the wine different grapes they use for producing different type of wines therefore first we they need to weakening or they make it a very soft one so once they once they uh, soft when they soft the grapes then they can easily remove that the seed of the grapes 
after that only they use the maceration if not so if they are going to macerate it using with the seeds then a seed flavor everything will be coming but here they they produce the wine by a very very much uh, they use some uh, kind of very um, careful process because if you have not careful with the uh, wine processing uh, that uh, process uh, processing steps then you will end up with the different taste of the wine therefore the other countries they are really really concerned about the taste of the wine so if you have if you have some experience you know the wines are having a different taste right even in the temperature the humidity and the fertilizer and the water everything they control to make a good grape once they get the grape even they have to very uh, careful to make a wine out of that grape right therefore the weakening and the maceration purposes and to do it quickly and nicely so they use the enzymes in the uh, in the must and the press wine clarification and sedimentation then after that uh, after you get the grapes so you want to clarify it clarify means you want to remove the all the solid particles in the wine if not so you can end up with the juice uh, and also you want to sediment you make that the smaller smaller particle even you want to sediment and only take that the wine or the juice to the uh, to the upper level therefore and uh, this person purpose as well as in the young wine at the end of the fermentation uh, also they use enzyme because uh, young wine uh, going on for the going on fermentation or the maturation and thereby uh, they can get the different taste of the wine that young wine and hadabugama wine after some period one year two year period those uh, you can taste in a different way therefore the in the wine industry they are using different enzymes for the preparation of the real good nice flavor nice taste uh, wine rice color wine enzymes used in wine production are mainly pectic enzymes for color extraction and glucose oxidase used for lower glucose level now even the wine producing even people like uh, to have a less sweet taste and therefore the and the, they want to reduce the glucose level if the glucose level is high then the fermentation can be going on they want to reduce the glucose level and therefore they use the glucose oxidase and break down the glucose uh, molecule to the uh, different uh, molecules right and uh, pectic enzyme they use a color extraction because you have you know that the the different uh, wines are having different colors some are the magenta the magenta color some are red color some are maroon color and some are very uh, pink color they also call um, that color whatever that we can be used from the grapes but if the wine also can extract by using the different type of any type of fruits you can prepare the wine even at your home you prepare the king coconut wine and different wines you are producing at your home right in our the in the lab i think uh, under the food chemistry course we produce some uh, we use uh, some pea waste i mean the banana peel and uh, pineapple peel mango peel even that, that that peel even we can use to produce the wine but in that case uh, we have to add some sugar to for the fermentation purpose so likewise however they basically we use the enzymes uh, to make that process very uh, fast right then when we come to the brewery industry amylases uh, are used for starch modification decarboxylates alpha acetolactate minimize the fermentation and aging process oxygen scavenging enzymes minimize all flavors and lipid oxidation and amyloglucosidase degrades the dextrins to the fermentable, fermentable sugar now the brewery industry we are using the malt basically therefore the, we need to change the, the uh, maltase enzyme or the uh, different enzymes to make it the, the, the starch modification because uh, the malt then only we can get the brew get the real uh, beer right beer is having a different taste as well as uh, the different aroma so the, the not like a uh, wine therefore the so you you the beer companies they are really uh, very careful about 
what are the enzymes they are using to brewery brewery process as well as the what the amount and what is the temperature maintained so accordingly actually they can according the raw material as well as the how they are maintained the process and the, the, the process is going on in supporting with the enzyme and thereby you will end up with the different type of uh, beers even one company beer is not similar to the other companies the, all over the world there are different brewer companies all are having a different type of uh, taste and uh, taste and uh, color also the color more or less similar but taste and especially flavor here actually very importantly in the brewer industry that the flavors can be oxidized very quickly and uh, flavor taste and then the aroma can be oxidized very quickly so the therefore the once you uh, if we are not if the oxygen is available in that the in there that oxygen can be break down this aroma and the, the aroma so the flavor molecules very quickly very very uh, unfavorable situation and produce the unfavorable situation. Therefore, we want to uh, minimize the off flavors and lipid oxidation. Therefore, we add the oxygen scavenging enzymes there. Right? Those enzymes are trap the oxygen and scavenge the oxygen and the oxygen availability of the system is um, removed. Thereby, they can maintain the good flavors and aroma of their brewer breweries. Especially in the case of wine, even this is uh, this uh, enzymes are used. Now uh, here it's showing a very small uh, picture uh, the, of the brewery industry, and these enzymes are proteases, beta glucanase, alpha amylase, and amylo am amylo glucosidase. And uh, you can see the where they are using these enzymes what kind of process is going on here and even you can see they mentioned the what is the ph level and what's the temperature they strictly maintain that ph and uh, these temperatures to get uh, the very nice uh, brew, uh, beer at the end you have to learn this study this picture and you can uh, get more idea about that then when come to the coffee and tea industry enzyme treatments for black tea processing is there you know that the, uh, prior to the fermentation of tea, uh, that uh, you keep the tea for fermentation first. Once you, you pluck the tea leaves and keep it for fermentation, and then they are, because of that, you can get the black color of the tea as well as that the real nice aroma uh, for the, uh, from the tea because of fermentation process. Prior to the extraction of black tea and to the extract of the black tea, even they add the enzymes to uh, make uh, the I mean, once the extract, so that they get the very clarified, clear, so it's clear black, clear black tea, they uh, use this uh, enzymes, right? This to improve soluble solid yield, cold water extractability and solubility, decrease in tea cream formation, and improve the clarity. Especially in the case of, uh, in some situation, tea is, you can't extract the tea, get the tea, if we are not going to use the hot water but in some situation they want to use the cold water for this situation to extract the, the tea in, to facilitate this process to increase the cold water extractability then uh, they want to use that uh, enzymes in the in some situation you know that uh, let's see you have heard about instant tea in the market right in your preparation of the instant tea, instant tea should have the color as well as the taste. If we are not going to trap the, the color and taste of the in, uh, tea in, uh, of the tea to the instant tea, then using instant tea is uh, no meaning. Therefore, they use the enzymes. Uh, they do the cold water extraction. They in that situation they get the support from the enzyme to do cold water extraction of tea. After that, getting the tea extract, they do a spray dye, and uh, then uh, they trap the, the what is, uh, get the tea tea powder, decreasing tea cream formation, and also the uh, because you have seen that the once you put the uh, hot water to the tea, sometimes you can see cream form on top of the uh, top of the jug. Have you seen anyone? They In some situation, even if you have put the tea bag to the teapot, tea cup, 
cracks and with the hot water, you can see that the cream formation is not good actually. Cream formation for a good tea, the market will be going down or the no no price for the tea if it is a if cream form. To decrease thing, that thing also they use the enzymes and also they improve the clarity. Clarity. And last and part of the clarity solids the clarity is basically reduced by the coagulation of uh, or the coagulation of different molecules. Protein of the one people, protein coagulation, and the different things get together, then the fat will be going down. To reduce that, they also use the enzyme. Therefore, enzymes capture that the uh, enzyme reduced, uh, cap I mean, uh, so not support, but they inhibit the uh, cloudiness of the tea. When it comes to the processing industry, pectinases are used for the pre peeling of citrus fruits produce natural cloud, uh, cloudifiers from citrus peel right so the uh, in the pre peeling not only the citrus fruit for many type of fruits that the pre peeling is needed before you prepare the product that means uh, uh, it's supporting for the pre peeling and the peel like a iron current the it's supporting with the pectinases are supporting because uh, peel is really having a hard texture Therefore, sometimes it's difficult to remove the peel. If the peel is there during the other process, even the producer's process or the thing, then uh, uh, it gives uh, the of a different taste to the to to the fruit juice. Especially in the case of citrus fruits, you know that the citrus fruits once you squeeze citrus fruits. Then different are uh, nangerine. Nangerine uh, flavor, the flavor is uh, sorry, aroma is coming out. Up again, citrus soon the killer. A soon the nangerine can enzyme molecular can have any molecule like a produce can with a little within your plant that can be done. It can be any nangerine. Therefore, the if the that citrus uh, nangerine is there, definitely it will be the off flavor to the juice. Therefore, they want to pre peel the citrus fruit, and thereby, after peeling, they have the juice. Produce natural cloud fires from citrus peel. Also, the uh, someone is disturbing again. Sushima, can you check again who are the people uh, not uh, with the mirror phones? Okay, madam. Thank you. Technique is uh, they have a pre peeling of citrus fruits, produce natural cloudifiers from citrus peel. And pectin methyl esters are used for retaining the fruit's natural shape and color, right? Uh, in some situations. So, the, uh, for example, let's see now uh, for the strawberry, if you are going to produce a strawberry jam, and uh, if you are going to produce a jam, that the strawberries will be making the Come to the different shape. So, if you use the pectin methyl esterase, then uh, because of the pectin methyl esterase, strength the, uh, inside the, uh, the what is it, pectin layer of the fruit, therefore you can keep the shape of the fruit, especially and the color, even the strawberry and the different berries. When you prepare the berry, when you prepare the fruit, uh, different jam or the different type of product using the berries, uh, berry type fruits, they use this uh, pectin methyl esterase to keep the fruit as it is. If you have pain and attending uh, strawberry, hurry, berries, sorry, if you have a strawberry, blueberry, different type of canberry, you can find it. 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 You can find Actually, industries are really, really improved and uh, uh, once you go, especially I have seen the very good market in the Japan. Japan, the my home, the good market. I have seen a very nice. The variety of products are there. Japan, market, Japan, food market, there. and good art products. There are variety of products. I mean, that all that thing, no. Good art, man, that all thing, no. All Golangi, Gakigla. They are really man Korea, Hin, Korea, man Hin, there are that Chinese, man, man, Korea. I am not interested in the good this type of see this type of the Chinese market. I have no idea. 
but uh, the uh, japan i did my phd there and therefore i lived there the four years so therefore i know that market and man kan den tawat den true that thing um so the uh, many markets are really nice and it tell man ichara loku market ekak kuwata takala naha wage mata mataka right how you so once i go to the go to any kind of any country so i go to the market food market and see food dress from so food stalls and see so what kind of products are there so really interesting lot to learn right um then fruit processing fruit and vegetable juices industry acidic acidic bring down the cloudiness and the bitterness of fruit juices especially that is very important cloudiness down goes down and the, uh, the bitterness uh, reduce because the bitter especially that the bitterness is coming from the outer peel therefore the if we use the acidic pectinase so it's a cap, captured at the bitterness of uh, fruit juices especially is coming from the tannins then cellulose take to light it can send reduce thickness and case of the solid liquid separation is to the solid liquid separation then uh, you can uh, reduce the thickness because once the solid liquid separation is happened the thickness is going down then uh, you can get the very uh, thin uh, fruit juices uh, be, then the other cellulases cellulases and amylases and pectinases improve the yield of the juice vitamins as well as pigment they support to release these vitamins and pigments and uh, then uh, therefore the it's make a very rich uh, juices to produce these enzymes now it's a, as a summary you can see the dairy production we use the rennet lactase protease and catalase and brewery in this we use beta glucosidase alpha amylase protease amyloglucosidase uh, to get the very nice flavor color and the, the, the clear beer the baker industry maltogenic amylases glucose oxidases pectin pecto synthesis lipases kind of uh, things getting the getting very nice texture nice shape nice uh, porosity inside the inside the bakery product and uh, plump you know, the the good volume and softness so everything can get can get if you added some enzymes wine and fruit juice industry we are using pectinase and beta glucanes also to get the clear wine and the taste and the not off flavors and remove oxygen and likewise we have learned a lot in the case of meat protease and pepain we use so the pepain we use for the tenderization protease also getting the very uh, soft taste then the uh, like so Uh, alpha, alpha glutaminase we are using glutaminase enzyme we are using getting very good texture and uh, there are the, the different different type of enzymes we are using in the industry to get a the very nice uh, final product of the uh, uh, final product therefore the without enzymes actually because uh, in the industry always we think to reduce the activation energy the low cost we want to very good product they have all enzymes are supporting in a different way to come out with a very nice good product right any questions do you have so this is the uh,